Welcome back to a brand new YouTube video. In this one, I'm going to be taking you through a full leg day. I'm so excited for this workout and to share it with you guys. The last video I posted, I posted a back and biceps workout and then I did a voiceover of like everything I'm thinking about during the workout, the little cues, the little tips that go through my mind and I share them with you with the hopes of like helping you out in your workouts, making it feel a little bit better, more mind to muscle connection, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to do the same thing today, but for legs. So yeah, really exciting. How the workout's gonna go is we are gonna be performing a total of four exercises and the rep scheme might differ depending on how I'm feeling for um, the workout. But yeah, I ate my oatmeal. I'm ready to go. It's a little later in the day than I want it to be, but it's totally fine. Um, so yeah, let's drive over to the gym and let's get this lift. Okay guys, we made it to the gym. Turn off the car. <laughs> I'm excited, I'm pumped, I'm ready to go. Wanted to make a note, I don't take pre-workout and you can probably guess why. I already have so much energy right now. <laughs> it's insane. I just need to blast some really good music for a workout and my energy is just like up here. So let's go. First things first, we're starting leg day with a warm up. So, starting off by mobilizing through my spine with some cat cows and then spending a large chunk of my warm up warming up my hips and opening up my hips. So, here you can see I am going through some dynamic stretches to open up my hip flexors and then my hamstrings as I shift back and now doing some adductor work. I find specifically in squats, if I don't warm up my adductors, I'm more likely to strain them, which I have done in the past. So these hip rocks are absolutely amazing. And then moving into a pigeon stretch and just really rocking through the movement, doing those dynamic stretches to feel really comfortable in those ranges of motion because we don't realize it, but in a lot of lower body movements, such as a squat, we got to rely on um, our hip mobility and sometimes it's not there and the only way to get it there is by working on it. So that's what I'm doing here, working on that hip mobility so then it feels so comfortable when I'm in a squat and I can more so focus on loading weight and feeling it in my muscles rather than feeling like, oh, I'm super tight, things like that. So that is why I spend so much time at the beginning of my workout just opening up my hips. And it's not even a lot of time, honestly. To be honest, this whole clip was like four minutes, so I'm not spending that much time on it, but it is definitely worth it. So now just going through some hip controlled articular rotations, followed by some ankle controlled articular rotations cars. So again, I said this in my last video, this is basically just taking my joints to their end ranges of motion in all angles, just like scraping by the end range and really getting that full range of motion going on. Next up, I also like to open up through my shoulders and upper body because they are always there to support, especially in exercises you will see such as my RDL. I'm holding the barbell with my upper body, so I want my shoulders to be propped and primed as well. And same goes with my neck. I don't like to train with a stiff neck. <laughs> so just warming up there, doing some cars, and then to end off the warm up, really making sure that my hamstrings and my hip mobility are there. 
because the first exercise is going to be squats. So I want to make sure I get that full range of motion. And then once again, really shifting through my adductors because once you've got a, got a strain once, you never want it to happen again. So I'm always warming up my adductors before a session. So moving on to exercise number one, which you guys know is squats. I'm starting off with a set of just the barbell to warm up the legs and then we're going to be moving into six total working sets i know that's a lot in each set we're going to be adding 10 pounds while decreasing the reps so starting off with 95 pounds going for 12 reps and then adding 10 going for 10 reps adding another 10 going for eight adding 10 going for six and then my top set is going to be at 135 which is a plate on each side for four and then what I'm going to do is for my last final six set, I'm going to drop down the weight back to what I did for eight reps and try to get eight more reps while my legs are fatigued. So I guess it's a good time to mention that I'm squatting today without any safeties, which was actually really terrifying and I do not recommend. But those um, barbell holder things wouldn't attach to the inside part of this squat rack. So I was kind of forced to just go with it and it actually provided me with a little motivation that i had to get the weight up but quick tip if you are squatting like this and you can't lift the weight up no worries just drop the barbell behind you and walk forward all right so let's talk about technique so as i set up the barbell i like to put it on the meaty part of my upper back and then if i am wearing a ponytail i will just flick it over before i pick up the weight behind the barbell that way it's out of the way and then I'll pick up the weight and find my footing. I like to take my feet just outside hip width and then point my knees and toes out. And as I am going down into my squat, I am driving my knees out and keeping my core nice and locked in, bringing it to at parallel or just below parallel and then driving up through my heels. I want you guys to give this a try. On the way up in the squat, drive up through your heels you will definitely feel it so much more in the glutes and it will allow you to more efficiently lift the weight and you'll actually be able to lift more. And also, of course, always keeping that core nice and tight, nice and braced, locked and loaded. And it'll really just allow you to lift just that little bit more with good technique. And you might be wondering why I chose to do this ladder style set rep scheme. And it's basically because it keeps things interesting and I find it's really been helping me mentally overcome some of those heavier weights. For example, you will see at 135 pounds, one plate, I, I literally like never thought I could do that. Even though my body can do that, it's a mental block for me. So just incrementally getting up there set by set, adding five pounds on each side really allows me to break down those mental barriers and increase my strength that way. So up until this weight, it was kind of still like feeling like a warm up, getting my legs prepped and primed for the heavier sets. Now we're getting closer to the big girl weights and doing 115. So now it's starting to become a challenge for me. And at this weight, this is when I would have no energy if I didn't eat something before a workout. I've done fasted lifts before and it feels like absolutely the heaviest weight in the world at this point if I don't have any glycogen to readily use. So for me, that is why I have to have a good pre-workout meal. It's quite frustrating to be honest when you know your body is capable of so much more and you are just not fueling it for these workouts. So I always make it a priority to grab something to eat before. And you might be wondering why I am not wearing shoes while performing a lot of these lifts. And that's for a couple of reasons. First of which is because I don't want to rely on an external object for my own full body stability. So I like to work stability while performing these. My muscles, my tendons in my lower limb will then be activated a lot more. They will be challenged and they will adapt as well. And additionally, my proprioceptors and my pressure sensors in my foot, my ankles, those joints, 
they're also getting a workout. So they're sensing where my body is in space. And overall, I feel a lot more stable and grounded. And I also feel like I can activate the muscles I want to be using a lot easier. For example, pushing up through my heels is a lot easier when I'm not wearing shoes and I can really feel my glutes fire up. So now we're pushing the big girl weights. I want to make a little note to myself. This is the weight I was at right before I got my ankle sprain back in June and then I fully regressed, which is totally fine because I needed my body to repair itself, but I'm so happy I can get this weight up again for reps plus some. So I'm moving into my top set, which is basically a plate on each side, but I've liked to play tricks on my mind, so I put 35 into 10. For some reason, it seems lighter than if I put two 45-pound plates. So, yeah, that's my little tip. <laughs> Wish me luck. The key to pushing heavy weight is to get hyped. That comes with music, that comes with doing your little preset routine, whatever it might be. Get into your headspace and then just go for it. If you told me that I would be lifting 135 for reps, even a few months ago, I would have laughed at you. And now look at me go. So basically this is your sign that you can do hard things and if you set your mind to it come up with a plan to achieve your goals you will achieve them it's just literally a matter of time and energy and effort you will get there so now i've dropped the weight back down now this feels extremely light after taking off literally 20 pounds and by the end of this set my legs were dead they were burning it up and I was literally so ready for the next exercise. All right, so for the next few exercises, we are gonna be doing simple four sets of eight to 10 reps, starting off with hip thrusts. So enjoy this little clip of me making a fool of myself, um, bringing this box over so I can set up for my hip thrusts. Honestly, I don't even care at this point. I'm just in my zone. If people wanna laugh, look at me, they can do that. I hope it makes their day. So four sets of 10 hip thrusts, one plate on each side, nothing crazy, really focusing on the muscular contraction. Let's talk about the setup. In this movement, you are gonna wanna use a barbell pad. Trust me, it hurts so much if you don't. If you don't have a barbell pad, use a yoga mat or put your sweater. I have done it with my sweater before. So take a seat pretty close to your bench and then roll that barbell over to your pelvic region. Make sure you're in the actual middle of the barbell as well so the weight is evenly distributed. So placing my shoulder blades on the box, you can place some plates behind the boxer bench if you want as well to make sure it doesn't move. And then placing my heels right underneath my knees and my feet are hip width apart with a slight turn out in my toes. From here, I am scooping up through my pelvis. It's not a full body thrust, it's a hip thrust, a glute thrust. Using the gluteus maximus primarily, really thinking about scooping through the pelvis and keeping my chin tucked, looking forward. Optionally, you also want your boxer bench to be in line with your knees at the top of the movement. Mine was a little bit high, but it is what it is. This is what we were working with today. 
So since we fired up the glutes and the hip thrusts, in this next exercise, barbell Romanian deadlifts, we're gonna feel the glutes so much more. In addition to the primary muscle group working, the hamstrings, the back of the legs. When setting up this exercise, hold on to the barbell right under your shoulders. Take a step back, find your footing, which is hip width apart, and then you're going to tip from the hip, thinking about bringing your butt back as if you're closing a door behind you with your butt. I like to think of specifically closing a car door with my butt. Anyways, on the way up, you're going to push up through the heels to feel that glute contraction. So for me in this exercise, what always gives out first is my grip strength. And I'm usually using lifting straps when doing this exercise so I can take the focus off of my burning forearms and shift the focus only into the stretch in the hamstrings and glutes. But unfortunately, I left my lifting straps at my school gym one afternoon and I never got them back after that, which was super sad, so got ordered. Last little form tip here as well is engage your lats. Pull back through the back, retract your shoulder blades and feel the lats work and you'll be a lot more stable. And then also as you are going down, drag the barbell really close to your thighs, as close as you can up and down. In terms of range of motion, focus more so on the stretch in the back of the leg rather than getting super low. We want to keep it in the hamstrings, not round lower back. And last exercise of today is going to be the hip abduction machine. So I never get to use this machine at school. So we're making use of it now. Working on our glute med the most, the sides of the glutes. And I just decided to do the entire stack because like, why not? Um, so basically what I did here was four sets with a drop set. So I did four sets of eight reps and then I would drop the weight to 160 and wrap it out for another eight reps and your glutes will be on fire. my full leg day workout with more of a focus on hamstrings and glutes I would say and then I'm also trying to get my squat weight up so I worked a lot on those my legs are done they are actually shaking I feel them shaking right now but yeah four simple basic exercises use different parts of the legs and um, I really just focused on that mind to muscle connection, the muscle contraction and I got a great workout. So I hope you enjoyed the video and got something from it. Also, before we end the video, a little full circle moment here for a second. I grew up doing group fitness classes in this exact room. I grew up doing this class called Body Attack among others. Body Attack was my favorite. I became an instructor for the class when I was 18, for almost five, five years ago. <laughs> I'm gonna be 23 in a few weeks. But yeah, five years ago. And then the first time I taught a Body Attack class was up on that stage right over there. 
I'm no longer teaching the class at Good Life Fitness and working here because it's just a lot right now while I'm in full-time school in a literal doctorate program. So I gotta cut myself some slack because I always feel like, oh, I could be doing it, I could be doing it. I love it so much. Why am I not doing it? But my time will come and I appreciate the fact that I did get to teach back when I was 18, um, right in the beginning. So yeah, it's just like really nice to just be here. It brings back so many great memories. I used to literally, um, I had a spare in high school and I would come and do the lunchtime class because I had enough time to go when the spare was like right um, at the end, like when my spare was at the end of lunch, if that makes sense. Like it was lunch and then the next period was my spare. I'd have enough time to come and the class was at 12 to one. So it worked out perfectly. Anyways, I can talk about this literally forever. It's just really nice to be back for a little bit in this club. I really enjoyed the workout. I really enjoyed literally just being here. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. Let me know if you want more of these kind of more instructional based hip videos because I love to make them. I love integrating my knowledge from my kinesiology, chiropractic background, personal training, group fitness, all that. I did all that. So I love sharing it all with you because I don't really have a platform for it other than basically sharing all the information with my mom even when she doesn't want to hear it so yeah okay now i'm rambling on i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one